Okay, hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be looking at a really amazing application of contour integration that involves solving trig integrals in forms like this. So, how are we going to solve this integral? Well, of course we could use trigonometric identities and that is one approach to this. It will leave us with an arctan integral and I'll leave you guys to perhaps have a look at that if you want. But what I'm going to notice is that we're going from 0 to 2 pi and that we've got a cosine here. And so with a mind of complex analysis, we can look at this and think, well, okay, 0 to 2 pi constitutes the angles that we go around the unit circle, right? We start at 0, we rotate by 2 pi radians, and we end up back where we started. And of course, cosine is inherently linked to the unit circle because at any given point on the unit circle, its x-coordinate is cosine of the angle that it makes with the origin. And anybody who's come across any contour integrals before will know that when we integrate along a curve, let's call this curve gamma, we parametrize. And in this case, we would be parametrizing from 0 to 2 pi. And so it seems that we could represent this integral with a contour integral around the unit circle. Now, what complex function do we know that goes around the unit circle? Of course, it's e to the i theta. So what we're going to do is make the substitution z equals e to the i theta. And how can we then write our cosine in terms of this? Well, we've got to think of the complex definition of cosine. Cosine theta equals e to the i theta plus e to the negative i theta divided by 2. And of course, given that e to the i theta is z, we can rewrite this as z plus z to the negative 1, also known as 1 over z, all divided by 2. And now all that we have to do, given that of course we're going from 0 to 2 pi, is consider what dz is, so that we can make our swap for d theta. Well, dz is equal to i e to the i theta, and e to the i theta is z. So dz is equal to i z d theta, which means that d theta, if we just multiply by negative i on both sides and divide by z, is equal to negative i dz over z. Okay, great. So we've got all the information that we need to look at our integral in its complex form. So if we call this i and now make some space, what we're going to be looking at for i now is an integral around our unit circle, and I'm calling this contour, which I'll just draw over here for reference, gamma, and of course this radius is 1, and this is the origin, this is our imaginary and real axis. So we're integrating around gamma, and our function was 1 divided by 4 times cos theta minus 5, but of course that's going to be 4 times z plus 1 over z over 2 minus 5, and don't forget that we have to swap our d theta for negative i over z times dz. So this is our new contour integral that we have to solve. And let's just tidy this up a little bit. So this is equal to the, well, we can pull our negative i out of the integral. So it's going to be negative i times that same contour times 1 divided by, now let's expand this back out, we've got a 4 times a half here, which is just really going to leave us doubling, so it's 2z plus 2 over z minus 5 all times by z dz, and that's actually great that we've got that z on the outside there, because it's going to leave us with a quadratic, it's going to leave us with 2z squared minus 5z plus 2 dz. Now, this is a quadratic everybody should be able to factorise. And of course, this will factorise to 2z minus 1 times z minus 2 with respect to z. Okay, great. So, this is our integral. And what makes the magic really happen with solving trig problems like this is Cauchy's residue theorem, which of course says that the integral around a closed contour is equal to 2 pi i multiplied by the sum of the residues contained within that contour. And now that we've factorised uh, our integral, we can now see where our our poles. Where are the points that this function becomes undefined and blows up to infinity? Well, 
there's going to be two of them, right? Because there's two uh, factors in the denominator here. The first one is when 2z minus 1 equals 0, which of course means that z is a half. And the second one is when z minus 2 equals 0, which is when z is equal to 2. However, within our unit circle, 2 is going to be outside of our contour. And so we don't need to worry about it. We're only considering the poles within the contour. And the only one of them is going to be at a half. So all that we have to do is say that this integral is equal to negative i, because of course we've got our coefficient, times 2 pi i times the sum of the residues of our function at a half. And of course negative i times i is just 1. So really this is just 2 pi multiplied by our residues. So, how do we find out the residues of a pole? Well, we take the limit as z approaches the pole, which is a half, of the factor that is giving us our pole multiplied by our function, which is 1 over z minus 2 times 2z minus 1. Now, notice that if I factor 2 out, from our 2z minus 1 here, I'm going to end up with a z minus a half factor, giving us some nice cancellation there. And so what we're really calculating is the limit as z approaches a half of 1 over 2 times z minus 2. And of course, this is very easy. It's just a 1 over 2 times a half minus 2. A half minus 2 is going to be negative 3 over 2. Multiply that by 2 is just going to be negative 3, so that leaves us with negative a third. And we've just got to return to our original uh, integral, which tells us that it's 2 pi multiplied by this residue, which means that's, that our integral as a whole must evaluate to negative 2 pi over 3. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you'd like a challenge, but why don't you try using the same method doing the integral from 0 to 2 pi of cos to the 6 theta times sine to the 6 theta with respect to theta. Thanks for watching everyone and I'll see you soon. Bye.